In this lesson, we're going to look at slope of a line. But before we talk about slope, I need you to understand the concept of slope. So I want you to pause the video right now and do this point in the real world story. And then when you're all done with it, press play and we'll talk about it and move on. All right, so I said that um, you would go north or up three blocks and then east or right four blocks. And then down here, uh, I said Jackie will not get lost because it's basically the same thing, just in a different order. Now, when we're trying to give someone directions in the real world, we might say north, south, east, or west. When we're trying to give directions in the math world on a coordinate grid, we're talking about slope, and we would use words like up, down, left, right. So what we just did with Jackie was we were essentially finding the slope between um, the two points. And the easiest way to calculate slope is to look at a graph um, and you would count how many units you move up down, that's the numerator, and then you would count how many units you move left right, that's the denominator, and then you write it like a fraction. And the numerator, as I said before, is the up down value, and the denominator is the left right value. So let's get more official into what slope means. Slope describes the steepness of a line. And those of you that went on survival with me in seventh grade, you had very first-hand experience with slope. When you remember when we got off the bus, we climbed up Alexander Hill. That was pretty steep because you had all your bags on. Um, and then later when we climbed up the notch, that was even steeper. Now, if you didn't go on survival, I'm sure that you still have lots of experience with slope. If you've ever ridden a bicycle, um, you know that some hills are steeper than other. There's this hill coming up Route 6. If, you, if you've ever ridden your bike down Route 6 right near the school, um, if you're coming towards the school from the Mattapoisett side, it's very steep at one point, um, and then it can be flat in other points. The words that we use to define slope would be rise over run. We would call that the change in the y values over the change in the x values. We take our y values, that's our numerator, and the run value, the change in the x's, would be our denominators. The letter that we use to represent slope is the letter M. I'm not really sure why it's not S, but, you know, just go with it. And if we don't have a picture, we want to use the slope formula, which would be m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Please don't put these two and ones in the air up here. They go underneath. They have a special name. It's called a subscript. When it's in the air, it's actually called a superscript. So the subscripts for 1 and 2 just represent which point it came from. If you look at the picture, we've got point 1 right here and point 2 right here. And it's just telling you which number the value came from. Did it come from point 1? Did it come from point 2? This is x1, y1 because it's the x and y from point 1. This is x2, y2, because it's the x and y from point 2. So the 1s and the 2s in the formula just represent which point it came from. You can have different types of slopes. So you can have a positive slope and a negative slope. And a positive slope goes up from left to right, and a negative slope goes down from left to right. When I'm usually thinking of slopes and whether it's positive or negative, I like to think of myself like on the line, so I kind of draw myself skiing on the line, and you can tell that I've never been skiing because <laughs> this picture is going up, and who skis up a hill? Um, but me, Miss Lean. Um, but I'm gonna, you know, put my hat and my scarf on because I got to stay warm. Um, but that's going. I'm going up a hill. Then, if a negative slope, I think of myself going down the hill. So I've got my skis and my poles. And I've got my hat and my scarf, and I'm going down the hill. So that's negative direction, and positive is an upward direction. So let's look at some lines and determine what kind of slopes they have and what the slopes are.
So the first thing is when you read the directions, it says describe the slope of the line. We have to say whether it's positive or negative, and then we have to find the slope. So very easily we can look at this first line and know that it's positive because if you visualize me, Miss Lean, on this line skiing, it would be Miss Lean skiing up the line, which is very bizarre. Um, but so that's definitely a positive slope. Now what we need to do is write the slope as a fraction. So the slope is the rise over the run. It's the change in the y value over the change in the x value. So to go from this point to this point, just like Jackie in the previous example, we would have to go to the right 6 and up 5. Now remember the change in the y is the numerator and the change in the x is the denominator. So this fraction has to be 5 over 6. There's only one answer. It's not 6 over 5 because that would be upside down. So we've got a positive slope and the slope is 5 over 6. Now we go to letter B and I can see that that's a negative line because it's going down from left to right. So let's say negative slope. And let's talk about what the slope is. So just like Jackie, to go from this point to this point, we would have to move to the right two and down three. Down is a negative direction. When you want to talk about direction, you think that up and to the right, those are positive directions, and down and to the left are negative directions. So what I have is the fraction negative 3 over 2 because I went down 3 and I went to the right 2 change in y over change in x we're gonna leave it like this um, back in seventh grade and probably in sixth grade you were told to turn this into a mixed number negative 1 and 1 half but don't do that I'm not even gonna write it down because I don't want you to have the memory of me writing it because slope is a fraction it shows the difference in the the change of y and change of x and if you make it a mixed number, you don't see that relationship. So leave it just as it is. There's two other types of slope that we didn't look at yet. We have slopes of horizontal and vertical lines. Now, this is something that you'll probably just memorize over time, but a horizontal line has a slope of zero. So I'm going to write that down. The slope is zero, the number zero. And the reason that it's zero is because if we remember to do change in y over change in x, the change in the y values would be zero, right? Because I'm not moving at all to go from this point to that point. I don't have to go up or down at all, right? So the numerator is zero. The denominator would be how many I go to the right, which is seven, and zero over seven is the number zero. So you can do it as a fraction, but you'll just end up with the number zero. Now when we go over to letter B, it's not zero. Vertical lines have something that we call an undefined slope. Or sometimes people will say no slope, meaning it doesn't have a slope at all. Um, and mathematically, the way that we would do that is we would do the change in y over change in x. So to go from that point to that point, I would have to go down 4. But then I wouldn't have to move at all. I would have a 0 in the denominator because there's no change in the x value. Um, and then anything divided by 0 doesn't exist because you can't divide by 0. So we say either undefined slope or no slope. Don't write both, it's redundant. Um, but the reason is that you can't divide by zero. This chart underneath is very helpful. I would definitely encourage you to highlight it, circle it, put a star, smiley face, asterisk, whatever you want to do. Memorize this chart because it will help you recognize slopes. Uh, the last thing that we're going to look at about slopes is something special with parallel lines. Now, as cool as it sounds, parallel lines have the same slope. So as we go down and look at our example, 
um, or I'm sorry, the question, right, which says which two lines are parallel, and we have to explain why we're going to figure out the lines are parallel, not by saying, oh, they look like they're never going to touch, which is like a fifth or sixth grade definition. What we're going to do is we're going to find the slope. So let's find the slope of the blue line. I'll start right here at this point, and then in order to get to the next point, I'm going to go up one, two, three, four and to the right one, so that gives me a slope of 4 over 1. Now I'm going to go to the red line. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right 1. So the green line either has a slope of 4 or a slope of 5. So let's start at this bottom point, go up. Oh, it's up 4, right 1. So the answer is the blue and the green lines. And the reason is the eighth grade way of saying that they're parallel is not by saying they'll never touch. It's we say they're parallel um, because... Uh, they have the same slope. And the reason that uh, parallel lines have the same slope, it's because they have to increase at the same speed. And if slope is the steepness of a line, they have to have the exact same steepness. And what we're going to do is it gives us this story. Um, about the distance of a space probe from a comet after a certain number of minutes. And they want us to find and interpret the slope, which, as I said, would be like the speed of the line. How quickly is this comet moving? So we're going to get to this interpreting sentence in a moment. Uh, the easier thing to do is just to plot the points and find the slope. So I'd like you to make me a big L, a big first quadrant grid, because if you notice all the numbers are positive. And I want you to plot the points, and then when you're done plotting the points, press play. So what we've got are these points, and it's representing the space probe, and it's approaching a comet, like, right, like it's going to hit the comet. And what we want to know is the slope of this line, which is the speed that the line is moving. So you can pick any two points that are on the line. So I'll just pick the first two, because that's easiest. And I'm going to go down and then to the right. So I went down 2, which is negative 2. And then I went to the right, 3. So the slope of this line is negative 2 thirds. Now that makes sense to me because this red line is going down, which is a negative slope, so it makes sense that the fraction is negative. So we found the slope, now we have to interpret the slope. So interpret means to explain what the number means using the labels in the story. So if slope is change in y over change in x, what does negative 2 change in y mean? Well, the label for y is miles, and the label for x is minutes. So what does negative 2 miles mean in the story about the space probe and the comet? Well, negative 2 miles means that it's going down or closer 2 miles. And, th and minutes is pretty self-explanatory. Three minutes represents three minutes of past in time. So if interpret means to explain what the numbers mean using the labels in the story, then the interpretation sentence would look like this. The probe moves two miles closer every three minutes. That's the interpretation sentence. One thing I want to point out is that slope sentences use the words every, per, 
or each. Only use one, don't go overboard, but whenever you're writing a sentence about slope, you have to have the word every, per, or each in your sentence if you've written it correctly. Now, there is another way to find the slope using this chart. You can find it using the formula, but we're going to look at that later. Right now, I just want to focus on getting the points, and we'll look at the formula when we get together in class. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.